we can also implement operations that change a set. Let's say we have the set 135, and we want to add 0. Now, add is different than a join because add actually changes s to be a set that contains 0, whereas a join would create a new set, not affecting s. Now, what strategy can we use to add a 0? Well, one option is to look for the first value that is greater than the number we're adding, then reconstruct this part of the linked list so that it has 0 and then 1 and then 3 and then 5. So one way to do this is to edit the original instance so that first is now 0 instead of 1. It has a new rest, which is a link instance we create that contains the one that used to be up here, and the rest of that list has 3 and 5 in it. So here we've added 0 to the set 1, 3, 5, and now we have a set containing 0, 1, 3, and 5. Let's say we wanted to add 3. Well, we walk along the linked list looking for a value greater than 3. We find 3 before we find such a value and realize 3 is already in the list, so there's nothing to do. But if we want to add 4, then we walk from the beginning comparing 0, 1, 3. Okay, here is an element that's larger than 4. So I perform the same operation I did over here. Replace the 5 with the 4, instead create a new link instance with 5 as its first value, and copy the rest of this down here, which happens to be empty. There's one special case we need to worry about. What if we add an element that's larger than everything else? Then we're never going to encounter an element that's larger than what we're adding. So here, v is 6. I walk through and find that there is a link instance where the rest is empty, and 5 is smaller than 6. So I can perform an editing operation where I replace the rest of the list with a new link instance, but I leave 5 alone and set first in the new link instance to be 6. So here's that whole picture again. It's time to write some code. I'll write a function that adds v to s in place. It's also going to return s so that I can see the result. I'll start out with s containing 1, 3, and 5. I'll add 0, so that adds it to the front. When I add 3, that makes no effect whatsoever because 3 is already in the set. If I add 4, then it gets inserted between 3 and 5. And if I add 6, it gets added to the end. So let's work out an implementation. First of all, if you start out with list.empty as your representation of the set, you cannot add anything to it. However, if you find that s.first is greater than v, such as 1 being greater than 0, or 5 being greater than 4, then you can perform an operation where the statement s.first, s.rest sets these attribute values to something new. If instead you reach the end of the list, where you found an s.first value that's less than v and s.rest is empty, such as when we found 5 when we were inserting v equals 6, then we can change s.rest to contain this new link instance. And finally, if we find that s.first is less than v, but s.rest is not empty, we need to do something there. OK, so this is a skeleton for an implementation. Think about it for a moment, and then I'll show you in 3, 2, 1. A possible implementation is to change s.first to v, like we did here, and then construct a new rest of the list, which contains the original s.rest and also the original s.first value. If instead we're in the situation where we reach the end of the list, then we construct a new link that has s.rest, which is the empty list, as its end. Here we go. And we're inserting v after s.first, because uh, v is larger than s.first. The final case is where we traverse the list to find one of these two situations. The way we traverse the list is just to recursively call add on s.rest and v. So we're inserting v into s.rest, and that means we're inserting it into s as well because of the shared structure between s and s.rest. 
And I don't know why this line disappeared. That's just a weird Apple Keynote bug.